This conference will now be recorded. Well, thanks for coming along this month to the ESIP and USGS um, IT and I Information Technology and Interoperability and Tech Stack webinar series. Um, I'm your uh, regular host, David Blodgett from the US Geological Survey, and um, this month we have Gobe Habona from the Open Geospatial Consortium. Gobe was recently um, transferred into, or, or I guess Gobe took took on a new position within OGC um, called the Director of Product Management for Standards. Um, I have a few um, active roles in OGC and was excited to see Gobe um, taking in, taking on that role and um, wanted to take an opportunity to hear from him about um, kind of what that role entails and what um, his perspective is in terms of OGC or on OGC APIs progress. Um, and, and there's a lot of really interesting stuff going on in this space. And Gobe is um, definitely the world's leading expert on how OGC API fits together um, in a big picture. So um, this is the second to last one of these that I will be formally hosting. Um, the, the There's been a nomination made of Derek Masaki for the um, next year. And um, so Derek's with us to see what's going on. Um, I encourage you all to um, take a look at the active nominations for ESIP committees and clusters. Um, and get to know those folks. Um, and I look forward to where Derek wants to take the group. So without further ado, um, I think Gobe has uh, most of an hour here for us and we should we should have a little bit of time for questions at the end. Um, but I think I will go ahead and pass it to you, Gobe, and thank you very much for being here. All right, uh, Dave, thanks for that uh, introduction and uh, those kind words. Good day, uh, everyone. So my name is Kobe Hobona, and I work for the Open Geospatial Consortium as the Director of Product Management. Um, my primary focus uh, within the OGC as staff is um, on the OGC API standards, the development of those uh, standards, as well as the launch and uh, rollout. Uh, I also have a number of um, other roles uh, within OGC, um, most relevant uh, to, um, should I say, in addition to being product, um, the director of product management, uh, also relevant to this discussion is my role as the head of compliance within uh, the OGC. And I'll touch on each of those aspects um, at uh, various points during this talk. Okay, so. First, just a very quick overview of who the OGC are. So the Open Geospatial Consortium is a global con uh, organization, a global consortium representing over 500 uh, member organizations that uh, work within the um, government research, uh, academia, as well as the private sectors. OGC provides a hub for thought leadership and innovation for all things related to location and geospatial information. And in doing so, we also provide a, a forum through which industry can tackle interoperability issues, uh, as well as um, other, other related uh, aspects. Uh, OGC uses a um, consensus-based process to arrive at the standards that are published by the consortium. And uh, that consensus-based uh, process uh, is driven and um, championed uh, by all the OGC members, all those 500 uh, member organizations. So who are those members? Well, as I mentioned, the organizations come from, the member organizations come from the commercial government research and um, academic sectors. And there are a number of, um, should I say, reasons uh, that uh, draw those organizations to the OGC. Uh, some of those reasons are shown on this slide, for instance, business development, brand exposure, innovation and market support, uh, 
um, uh, growth of international collaborations as well as international partnerships. So there are several reasons why organizations participate in the OGC's consensus-based process. And what we do is we publish, we develop and publish geospatial standards. Uh, and if you're wondering what a, an OGC standard is, well, it's a document established by consensus and approved by the OGC membership that provides rules and guidelines aimed at optimizing the degree of interoperability within a given context. In developing those standards, we pull in um, requirements from a variety of places, for instance, from uh, different communities uh, or communities of practice, but also from our member organizations, as well as our partners and our customers. Uh, we also pull in requirements uh, from uh, a broad set of, um, of uh, should I say, industries, and also monitor market and technology trends. This slide here shows a photo taken at an OGC member meeting. OGC holds member meetings quarterly. Uh, I should point out that this photo was taken before the COVID pandemic. Um, so uh, since the uh, beginning of the pandemic, uh, all our meetings have been virtual. So we've held teleconferences, uh, but we still maintain the calendar. So every qu uh, quarter we have uh, OGC member meetings uh, with close to 200 uh, members at each one of those meetings. Now, focusing on OGC API standards, um, over the past couple of decades, OGC has developed a number of standards. Many of those standards have focused on OGC web services. Uh, and since 2015, OGC has looked at the, uh, the emergence and uh, interoperability issues relating to RESTful uh, services and eventually uh, issues relating to web API. So in 2015, we conducted research comparing REST to classic OGC web services. And by REST, I'm referring to representational state transfer. Uh, then in 2016, we did some research on RESTful binding for one of our popular web, uh, uh, web service standards. Uh, the specific standard was the web processing service. 2017, we published a white paper on OGC geospatial APIs. That white paper provided a, a summary of what the uh, current state of uh, web APIs was at the time, but also the motivation for embarking on, uh, on the development of of OGC APIs. Then in 2018, work began on a third version of the Web Feature Service Standard, which at the time was being referred to as the Web Feature Service Version 3 Standard or WFS3 Standard. Um, then in 2019, OGC members uh, uh, decided unanimously uh, that the time was right to uh, embark on a new suite of standards, um, uh, which has uh, been named the OGC API suite of standards, and WFS3 was uh, so renamed to OGC API features. Then, towards the end of 2019, OGC API features part one core uh, was published. So, that's the timeline which has brought us uh, to this point. We have a website where you'll find information about the different OGC API standards. The URL that's shown on uh, this slide, that's the URL for the OGC API website. Uh, you'll find information about the OG OGC API standards, um, events, and um, some of the initiatives that we're running to uh, support the development of the APIs. Now, why are we developing OGC APIs? 
Well, um, web APIs have proven to be an effective and very popular mechanism for rapid software development, uh, not only with the you know the development of web APIs, but uh, other forms of APIs before then have proven to be uh, extremely effective. Web I should say uh, an, an additional degree of excitement and capability uh, that has enabled the uh, rapid development of uh, web cap capability. And what we've seen is that there has been uh, you know, significant variations in the web, web APIs that are currently being developed across uh, the IT industry. Uh, you'll find several different uh, web APIs and many of them handling location information in very different uh, ways. So recognizing that API variations have the potential to degrade interoperability in the long term, OGC, as well as uh, its partners, have en embarked on an initiative to develop OGC API standards that will enhance interoperability between different web APIs, making it possible for those APIs to publish um, location referenced information in a consistent way. And these standards are being developed as open standards, uh, freely available uh, with a clearly specified uh, consensus process um, to support the development and uptake of those standards. So what are the OGC API standards? On this slide, you can see a list of the OGC API standards that are currently under uh, development, as well as one that has been uh, already approved. We've got OGC API Common, which provides a common set of requirements that all OGC APIs are expected to implement. We also have OGC API Features, which provides uh, the means to access vector feature data. You've got OGC API coverages, which provides the means to access coverage data such as tiled, uh, sorry, such as um, raster data. Then you've got OGC API records, which provides the means to access metadata records. OGC API processes, which provides the means to access geospatial processes such as buffering, hydrological uh, computation, as, as well as uh, other uh, geospatial uh, processes. Then you've got OGC API tiles, which provides the means to access tiled data, tiled maps, as well as other forms of tiled resources. Then OGC API maps, which provides the means to access electronic maps, OGC API styles, sorry, which provides the means to access styling information such as symbology uh, as well as other uh, similar uh, information, uh, types of information. Then you've got OGC API environmental data retrieval, also known as the ADR API, which provides the means to access different types of environmental data such as metrolog metrological data, uh, as well as trajectories. And the EDR API uh, makes use of uh, some of the capabilities from other OGC APIs. So it's, uh, it, it provides uh, uh, say, uh, 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 a specification that supports uh, multiple uh, capabilities um, that are offered on, by OGC APIs. Now, we're also working on a set of new concepts that will um, feature within future OGC API standards. And those concepts include, for instance, the routing API. Uh, the routing API will provide the uh, means to calculate uh, routes uh, from, you know, 
um, for instance, quickest route from one point uh, to, to the other. Um, there's also the Data Access and Processing API, also known as DAPA, uh, which is also currently under uh, development within the innovation program. Um, we're also developing a concept for an API for publishing av aviation data from the um, SWIM capabilities that are offered by uh, different uh, aviation authorities, such as the FAA, uh, as well as Eurocontrol and similar organizations. There's also a concept for a discrete global grid systems API or a DGGS a API. That concept is also being developed within the innovation program. Um, and finally, there's uh, another concept for a 3D geo volumes API, uh, which is also being developed within the innovation program. Now, I should point out that these imaging API concepts, these are being developed within the innovation program, after which uh, the results from those innovation program initiatives will then be handed over to the standards program where the actual standards will, will, will be developed. So um, these imaging concepts are still within our uh, uh, R&D mechanism uh, within the uh, OGC innovation program. And I've got here yes, um, uh, a, a figure from um, the DGGS community il illustrating what a DGGS is. Now, with each OGC API standard, you can expect a number of artifacts that support that particular uh, standard. So the OGC API standards are being developed as multi-part standards. So you'll find that uh, each one of those standards will have a part one, part two, uh, and so on. So in this case, for instance, we have an example from OGC API features where you've got part one being the core uh, set of requirements, and then uh, part two focusing on coordinate reference systems uh, by reference. Uh, we're also developing e-learning materials to support d developers in um, getting started with these OGC API standards. And uh, that's what you can see on the top right hand side, which is uh, basically a screenshot from an e-learning website that we've developed to support the uptake of OGC API features. We've also published a, an executable test suite to enable compliance testing for OGC API features. So any uh, product that would like set to certify that it support, uh, supports OGC API features, the um, developers of such products can uh, pass the, they can take the uh, products through the compliance testing process. And if those products pass the compliance tests, they can then uh, apply for certification as being OGC compliant. And then finally, with, um, in partnership with the International Organization for Standardization, also known as ISO, uh, we have published, uh, sorry, ISO has published, uh, with support from OGC, uh, the ISO 19168-1 uh, standard, which is the Geospatial API for Features which is the ISO version of OGC API features part one core. So with each OGC API uh, standard, you, you should expect to see a, a number of these artifacts developed um, and published alongside that uh, standard. Now I mentioned compliance earlier on. So organizations that um, have products that uh, pass the compliance test, are able to apply for certification. And once certified, the products are, uh, are listed on the OGC website as being OGC compliant. What you can see here on, on the screen uh, is uh, the compliance certification list for OGC API features. So you can see some of the early implementers um, that have the products that have already had that product certified. Now, the whole idea behind 
publishing the standards as well as uh, offering compliance testing um, tools for those standards is to ensure that we have implementations that implement those standards in a consistent way. So we'll, we're, we're expecting to have OGC API standards that implement um, you know, different capabilities consistently, uh, but also to have implementations of those standards that publish data in a consistent way. And what this slide uh, captures is that vision of being able to pull in data as well as other resources from different OGC API um, impl implementations and to have that being displayed in a consistent way such that at any point an end user can simply switch from one uh, form of representation to another. Now, we recognize that you know, there's, significant, there's a significant number of geospatial data sets that have been published using classic OGC uh, web service standards. There are currently millions of geospatial data sets that are on hundreds of thousands of uh, servers uh, that implement OGC web service standards, such as the web, web map service or WMS, the web map tile service, also known as WMTS, the web feature service, known as WFS, and the web coverage service, known as uh, WCS. Um, and these data sets are being used you know, in um, a variety of areas, for instance, emergency, data, uh, emergency and disaster management, aviation, metrology, uh, geology, as well as other areas. So we realized that there is you know, a, already a significant um, you know, uh, number of data sets that are out there and uh, OGC web services that are implemented uh, in, on operational uh, systems. And these, um, you know, uh, uh, OGC web services uh, also support other uh, OGC standards, uh, for instance, those for data models and encodings, or as you can see on this slide, is some of those OGC web service standards, as well as the data models and data encod encodings. Now, you know, that recognition um, emphasizes the fact that, you know, we, you know, we simply will not just switch from OGC web services to OGC APIs overnight. Um, we're expecting that for quite some time there will will still be operational systems that use OGC web services. Um, however, what we are doing is we are advising organizations to start planning now for operational systems to use OGC APIs. The OGC API stand, standards such as uh, OGC API features that have already been uh, approved and, and published. So we're saying to organizations, um, you know, implement those standards, implement OGC API features, uh, uh, and also implement some of the uh, other ca uh, candidate standards um, and, you know, plan for the introduction of those standards into your operational systems because we're expecting over time there will be greater use of OGC APIs. Even though we're going to be maintaining OGC web services, we're expecting that over time there'll be a larger footprint from OGC APIs in comparison to OGC web services. Now, the number of principles uh, that we're applying in the development of OGC API standards uh, for instance, special data on the web best practices. Um, these are best practices that were developed jointly between OGC and the W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium. We're applying principles from those best practices. Uh, we're also leveraging the Open API specification uh, specifically for how the uh, API implementations describes uh, describe the uh, interfaces. Uh, so we're leveraging the open API specification and also focusing on the developer experience as well as usability. So a key concern right from the uh, start when we embarked on uh, the development of these API standards was we wanted to ensure that the API standards provide 
uh, you know, a very developer friendly uh, experience. Um, so that has been a key con concern uh, and that is a key principle that we are applying across all the OGC API standards. And they've been developed as modular building blocks. Uh, modular building blocks that make it possible to spatially enable uh, web APIs. Um, and all of this development of the OGC API standards is being done publicly. We're using public GitHub repos uh, and using any implementations to help accelerate the development of those uh, OGC API standards. Now, I listed the uh, standards uh, earlier on, but I want to talk a bit about the resources that are published by each of those standards. So the resources that are published by OGC API standards uh, in many ways are similar to the resources that, uh, are, that have been published by OGC Web Service uh, standards. However, there are certain aspects that, uh, you know, where uh, you may find that in the past, perhaps we may have had one uh, OGC Web Service standard publish a particular type of uh, content. And then within with OGC APIs, well, in some cases, we're splitting the publication of those, uh, you know, uh, types of uh, data into uh, multiple uh, standards. So. Uh, it's so it's not just so it's not a one-to-one -one mapping from OGC web services to OGC APIs. Uh, we, are, we are literally, um, you know, uh, I'll say revolutionizing how we are actually publishing uh, different types of geospatial uh, uh, resources. So you've got metadata records, 2D maps, 3D views. Uh, you've got time series data, map tiles. Uh, you also have tiled data sets, uh, features and geometry, imagery, and uh, gridded data. All of those, uh, as well as observations, all of those are uh, geospatial resources that we are, um, you know, that we are designing OGC APIs uh, to support. And that has led to the development of the specifications that I listed early on. And this is how those geospatial resources map to the different OGC API uh, standards. So you've got OGC API records for uh, metadata, OGC API maps for electronic maps. Um, and I should point out that, uh, you know, OGC API records, um, you can effectively uh, consider it the successor to uh, CSW to the catalog services for the web standard. You've got OGC API maps, uh, which you can consider to be the successor to the web map service or WMS. Um, OG, uh, OGC API tiles, uh, which you can consider to be the successor to the WMTS, uh, with the added twist that OGC API tiles is able to publish both tiled data. so for instance, vector tiles, as well as tiled maps, which were supported by WMTS. Um, you've got OGC API features, uh, which effectively is the successor to the web feature service. Um, and then you've got OGC API coverages, which is effectively the successor to the web coverage uh, service. Uh, and in the case of OGC API tiles, it can be used alongside other standards, for instance, when used alongside OGC API maps, you then uh, inherit that uh, ability to publish uh, tiled maps or map tiles. Uh, but when used alongside other standards, you are then able to publish uh, other types of resources. Um, and there are, some, also, there are also some new um uh, concepts some new uh concepts for instance ogc api uh environmental data retrieval doesn't really have an equivalent uh ogc web service standard it's a new concept um so with ogc api environmental data retrieval also known as the edr api you're able to publish meteorological data 
uh, as well as uh, other types of environmental data, oceanogra oceanographic data, for instance, uh, you're able to publish trajectories as well as other types of uh, environmental uh, content. Now, what can you expect as a developer? Well, as an API developer, you can expect uh, a, a number of uh, uh, artifacts to support your uptake of OGC API standards. For instance, OGC API uh, features, there's, there's a lot of content on the GitHub repository um, that um, the Features API Swig has, um, has set up. And you'll find uh, on GitHub the draft specifications, the uh, discussions around those specifications. You also find questions from early implementers. Uh, you'll find tips as well on you know uh, things that you can uh, do with the OGC API um, uh, feature standard in this in this case. Uh, so we've got GitHub repositories to support uh, uptake, but you will also find open API definition uh, documents providing examples of how you can implement your own uh, pro uh, products uh, support for OGC APIs, and uh, many of the open API definition documents are publicly available on Swagger Hub, uh, but we also uh, publish uh, versions of those uh, through Redoc, which is another uh, open API uh, pub pub uh, publication tool. Now with each API definition document, you'll find a description of the resources that are published uh, through that uh, particular stand standard. You'll find the specification of the, uh, of the paths uh, the API paths, uh, as well as the HTTP methods, the uh, uh, types of errors that are returned by each of those um, 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 HTTP methods and um, the different resources. You'll find the conformance classes as well, the different levels of, or even building blocks that um, an implementation has to uh, implement if they would like to uh, support that particular uh, type of capability. So you'll find all of that information in both the open API definition document as well as the actual uh, standard uh, itself. Similarly for OGC API coverages, you'll find um, specification of the resources, the paths, the HTTP methods, uh, but one thing as well that you should also um, note on this slide is the consistency in terms of the paths. Um, the consistency in the uh, some of the key uh, in the paths, for instance, the landing page, the API definition, the conformance class uh, de declaration, the collections uh, resource. Those are consistent across all of the OGC API standards. So the idea here is to make it very easy for developers to uh, implement one OGC API standard and then to implement another OGC API standard building um, you know, capability on uh, the uh, previous uh, implementations. And what we've seen from our members is the uh, a variety of deployment uh, models. Uh, but one uh, deployment model that is consistent across many of those implementations is that they are being um, the OGC API standards are being implemented using a building block approach. So you can have, a, for instance, you can have a single uh, uh, deployment of an OGC API standard, but then have uh, additional uh, de implementations of other uh, OGC API standards, building uh, a solution that supports a variety of uh, capabilities and resources. For instance, on this slide, you've got OGC API tiles, maps, coverages, you've got the EDR API, you've got OGC API features. And this makes it possible to support the needs 
uh, of a variety of end users. For instance, if you've got an end user that's looking to retrieve uh, feature data in uh, WGS84, they're able to use an implementation of OGC API features part one. If you have an end user that's looking for feature data that's uh, in any other coordinate reference system, they're able to access uh, that content through an implementation of OGC API features part two. Uh, if you have an end user that's looking for tile data, they're able to use OGC API tiles and so on. So the whole idea is to uh, make it easier for developers to plug in all of those capabilities in order to build solutions that address a variety of end user needs. And on the slide, what you can see is an example of uh, imp implementation by Cubeworks. Uh, here you can see um, some of the resources that are published by the uh, Cubeworks implementation of various OGC API standards uh, for styles, maps, tiles, and so on. And we're seeing some of the implementations as well, um, you know, being uh, developed uh, with a microservices uh, approach. So implementing uh, just some of the basic capabilities uh, and then over time scaling up or implementing just some of the basic, uh, you know, some of the individual building blocks within some of these microservices. Uh, so we are, you know, with OGC API uh, standards, we're trying to support a whole variety of uh, you know of, 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 of needs, not just from the end user side, but also from the developer side. And microservice uh, architecture is uh, you know it's is one of the uh, mechanisms through which we are seeing developers implement those OGC APIs within their organizations. And not only is that development taking place in the cloud. But we're also seeing some of that development uh, take place uh, within container uh, technologies or containerization technologies such as Docker, uh, for instance. And we've seen, for instance, the Earth Observation uh, community implement application packages that make it possible to, um, you know, to implement um, geospatial processes using OGC API pro uh, processes and then deploy those um, in, um, in the cloud and containers as well as uh, in the cloud uh, in order to move the processing capabilities closer to the actual data, particularly with satellite um, uh, collected uh, data. Now, where are we in the development of these standards? Well, OGC API features part one and part two have been approved and published by uh, the OGC membership, and we have compliance tests for OGC API part, uh, features part one. Um, the compliance test suite for features part two is still currently um, under uh, development, and work is ongoing on the other OGC API standards. We are using um, you know, uh, sprints as well as other types of in uh, innovation program initiatives to uh, rapidly develop these APIs. So every so often, you'll you know, if you look out for uh, announcements of code sprints, uh, because many of those code sprints uh, focus on OGC API standards. So we're using test-based pilots, platforms, research projects interoperability experiments, sprints, and hackathons to uh, accelerate the de development of OGC API standards. Uh, and since perhaps 2018, uh, we've held several of these uh, code sprints, uh, as well as hackathons. What you can see on this slide are um, uh, photos taken at some of those events. I should point out that these uh, uh, events, uh, uh, the events shown on these photos took place before the COVID pandemic. But you can see the level of attendance. attendance. Um, you know, we tend to have uh, several uh, developers and uh, solutions architects participate in the sprints. Uh, we also run pilots, where, and some of those are shown on, uh, on, on this slide. Um, yeah, and over the uh, recent 
five or so months, we've held several sprints focusing on OGC API standards, uh, including OGC API maps coverages, uh, common and uh, and features, as well as the uh, EDR API. And um, some of these initiatives, some of these sprints, uh, were uh, sponsored by uh, you know by um, organizations that uh, publish uh, quite a lot of data, so you can. Uh, you know, you can see the level of support uh, is significant. Um, I should uh, mention as well that the uh, recent OGC API ETR sprint was supported by uh, by NOAA, uh, the U.S. Uh, Oceanographic uh, Agency. We also run test beds. Uh, we have an annual test bed that uh, runs for approximately nine months uh, at a time. And um, the current testbed, which is testbed 16, is due to finish and report back in December. And uh, we're expecting several uh, engineering reports um, to document OGC API uh, initiative uh, or uh, development tasks. Um, and um, also in December, the call for participation for Testbed 17 will be announced. So uh, for any developers that are interested in participating in, in Testbed 17, look out for that announcement in December. The Testbed 16 results will be presented at the OGC member meeting in, uh, in December, as I mentioned. Now, what can you expect from an end user uh, perspective? Perspective. Well, as an end user, you you can expect several different types of uh, client applications to support OGC APIs. So I've got uh, here a few screenshots from some of the sprints that we held recently. This particular screenshot uh, is from Hexagon Geospatial. They implemented support for OGC API maps and OGC API tiles in the Lucia Lightspeed product. Um, so that this screenshot was um, captured during uh, the OGC API sprint uh, early on this year. This screenshot is from the um, is from uh, the uh, Autonom Autonomous University of Barcelona uh, UAB, uh, and uh, this was also from a recent OGC API sprint. Uh, so this was the OGC API maps sprint, uh, and you can see here this uh, with this screenshot you can see some of the requests that are being sent out from this particular uh, client application. We also uh, recently had a demonstration of uh, support for OGC API tiles by a company called Skymantix. Uh, they were using the uh, a, an app which they built on top of the Unity 3D uh, SDK. And uh, this is an augmented reality uh, application uh, that runs on mobile devices uh, as shown on the screen. There's a video clip uh, of that demo uh, at this uh, URL. Uh, another Demonstration was uh, uh, on OG on the Geo Volumes API, which uh, was being developed in the OGC's interoperable simulation and gaming uh, sprint. So this was by a company called Echeri, uh, and uh, using the Gnosis client, they were able to demonstrate um, support uh, for the Geo for the Geo Volumes uh, API, the OGC's Imagine co uh, concept. Uh, and uh, the screenshot is uh, from that uh, dem dem uh, demo, and you can there's a video clip at this URL uh, of the complete demo. Now for now um, also uh, at a recent OGC API sprint, uh, PyGeo API was demonstrated and its support for OGC API coverages. What you can see here is a screenshot showing um, its uh, su uh, support for uh, the global deterministic prediction system. Um, and um, also as part of that uh, demonstration, uh, the team from PyG API also showed us 
um, how using uh, Jupyter Notebooks, one could access an implementation of OGC API coverages and retrieve coverage data and use that coverage data in an analysis um, task using uh, Jupyter no uh, Notebook. And that's uh, what you can see with these slides. So in this, with this slide, for instance, uh, we're seeing discovery of a coverage that has been published that has been published through OGC API coverages, and that discovery is being performed using uh, a Jupyter notebook. Um, and then on this side, we're seeing an example of how that Jupyter notebook um, is then being used to review or to help review that coverage that has been retrieved from an implementation of OGC API. Uh, coverages, uh, but then to ultimately uh, use that um, uh, notebook to run uh, analysis on that uh, coverage uh, as well, and that's what's shown on this slide. So this was demonstrated at the recent OGC API uh, sprint. Now, if you'd like to find out more information about OGC APIs, please feel free to visit the OGC API .ogc.org website. There's information on there about OGC API standards, uh, some events that uh, we are planning and others that have completed, as well as uh, innovation program initiatives and uh, other documents as well. And if you follow hashtag OGC API, you'll uh, find uh, announcements on OGC APIs as well as links to various uh, demos as well. So in summary, OGC API standards are expected to play a key role in enabling rapid cross-community integration of geospatial data that is offered by web APIs across uh, the web and beyond. And we expect in the earth science community to play a key role uh, both as a developer and as an end user of implementation of OGC API standards. Uh, over uh, recent years, we've engaged um, with the ESIP community uh, extensively, and we are looking to continue to build on that, that relationship uh, and to also um, support the uptake of OGC API standards uh, within the earth science community. Now, as for OGC API standards, these standards are, sorry, as for OGC web service standards, these standards are broadly and globally implemented. They are implemented in operational systems. So we're expecting that, that um, the standards will continue to be maintained uh, um, by the uh, standards working groups that are responsible for those standards. Uh, but even as the OGC web service standards are being maintained, uh, we still expect that organizations will start to plan uh, for the introduction of OGC API standards into operational systems because over time we're expecting the footprint of OGC API standards to increase and ultimately we're, we're expecting many of the uh, implementers of current OGC web services will move towards OGC API standards. Um, that is what we're seeing, that is what we're expecting will happen. So we're encouraging organizations to start planning for the introduction of OGC API standards into operational systems. And from the scientific perspective, that means that scientists should look to introduce OGC API standards into their workflows, into their analytical processes, um, and that's something that we, we expect will uh, continue to, to happen as we've seen, for instance, with PyGeo API being used um, within the metrological uh, sciences, uh, for example. Thank you for your uh, time. Thank you for listening to uh, uh, this talk and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you Thank so you. much, Kobe. That was really good. Yeah, go, I'll just go ahead and open the floor. Does anybody have any pressing questions?
Yeah, this, this is Derek Masaki. Um, so I'm with National Geospatial Technical Operations Center. And um, so some of the products that we have um, largely ESRI based, um, but we have a real push to move toward open source um, cloud-based products. Are, are, are you seeing these uh, OGC open standard geospatial um, applications at the enterprise level running effectively in kind of large scalable cloud environments as, as stable services? Uh, yes, certainly. I mean, uh, I'll give you an example. So the PyGeo API uh, demonstration um, I showed a, a screenshot from earlier on, that is using data from, in fact, that's a, that's, that's, um, a, a, an implementation from um, uh, from the government of of Canada, uh, from uh, the Meteorological uh, uh, Service of of Canada, and uh, during that presentation, they pointed out that they are using uh, PyGeo API within you know mission critical systems. Um, so we're seeing organizations that have uh, very large uh, databases. Uh, use OGC API standards in, um, you know, in, in mission critical uh, systems and using those standards very effectively as well. Um, but I should point out that, um, you know, we have, op we have open source initiatives implementing OGC API standards, but we also have commercial organizations implementing OGC API standards. Um, organizations such as Esri, Hexagon, as well as others, the, those organizations are fully on board. They are, they are involved in the development of these OGC API standards, um, just as pretty much just as much as the open source um, software community is um, also supporting the development of the OGC API standards. And then one one other question: Did are, are you starting to see, or can you recommend? Um, sort of an, an industrial build out of these type of open geospatial products, just like you've you've got Red Hat, you know, that, that's supporting you know uh, Linux, but providing a lot of the service and support that um, some of our enterprise organizations need. Is 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 that starting to happen? Where you're really starting to see these um, larger companies. Um, serve at an enterprise level and then offer that that level of service and support uh, for for the open source tools I guess I'm thinking about like um, groups like OpenGeo well I mean uh, so we we are so at the, at this moment um, we are at the stage where we are um, you know developing the actual OGC API specifications um, and what what we've started doing perhaps more recently is to um, engage more aggressively with uh, you know some of those um, I'll say large scale API developing organizations. Um, so OGC is now a Red Hat uh, partner. Uh, we're officially a Red Hat partner, but okay. in addition okay. to but yeah, but in addition to that, uh, we have Microsoft Azure. Um, uh, they recently joined OGC as a principal member, and you know I think that shows you know the Tracy the level of commitment and um, dedication that um, you know um, th those organizations are, uh, are, are you know basically um, uh, 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 should I say putting in place when it comes to OGC APIs. We also have Amazon. Uh, Amazon uh, AWS, they also recently joined OGC as principal members, um, also showing their commitment to open standards, um, OGC APIs um, being, you know, um, examples of those uh, standards. Um, we've got other organizations as well that have been within the OGC also driving um, our thinking and development uh, behind those Standards, for instance, Google has been a, a principal member of OGC 
uh, for you know for for several years, helping us to uh, you know helping to direct and focus uh, development work, um, and you know and providing input into the development of OGC API standards. And of course, we've got uh, several uh, other organizations I mentioned, AS3, um, Hexagon, and others. But specifically on the question of you know enterprise systems and cloud providers. Uh, we're seeing many of those key players play a more active role in the development of these OGC API standards. Great. Thank you. I really enjoyed that presentation. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Um, Thank you. And I would, I would uh, back up a little bit of the comment about um, Environment Climate Change Canada and others implementing these in their kind of enterprise tax and say you know, we're we're doing that within the water mission area at USGS as well. So we've got most of the API features implemented and we're working on a couple other implementations for for our operational kind of real-time um, environmental data. So I think we're gonna see that more and more because these things really just match up to the expectations of the kind of more modern web. So very good. Um, thank you so much, Gobe. Um, this, was, this was an excellent, um, overview and a really good time to uh, get this information out there. So I will. This conference will now be recorded.